Well, I, I would say that it is uh, out of very deep uh, conviction uh, and uh, of what I think, what I believe is best for the long-term future of uh, Singapore. And I hope to be able to make a contribution in the discussions on uh, such matters. And I hope to be able to bring our young people along so that more, more of them will understand what God does here and what we need to do uh, going forward. Well, my, uh, I, I would say that when I started my career in the uh, police, the, the, the experience was actually a great deal of, uh, it, there was a great deal of involvement uh, in the grassroots events. I think when I, uh, because you have to mobilize the community uh, to work towards a common goal. Now, the, over the years, uh, although I've not been involved in the grassroots type activities in the form of constituency type work, uh, but I've been working with uh, people from all walks of life. You know, whether it's working with the ITEs or polytechnics to expand intakes and to raise the quality of our education there, or whether it is uh, in my work at the MPI, working with business associations, uh, working with uh, small businesses uh, to look at the issues that they face and look at how we can expand uh, the opportunities for them. Yeah. Now, in the more recent weeks, uh, uh, recent days rather, when I worked with the, uh, when I went down to the constituency, I felt like it was going back to where I started, uh, working with uh, many different people uh, and uh, mobilizing the community, uh, looking at uh, issues uh, affecting specific uh, individuals. I, I, I think uh, first, you know, I, let, let me focus on convincing our voters that uh, my colleagues and I are the best team for them. And, uh, you know, and it's not for me to decide. That would not be appropriate for me to uh, comment. Yes. Well, I, I think that in certain policy areas where uh, that consultation process, for instance, uh, is uh, useful, uh, I think a lot uh, can be done. For instance, in the MES, uh, over the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, we, we have started a process whereby no major regulations are made uh, without a consultation document on our website where the industry uh, provides its feedback. So in those areas, you know, those are the, uh, we can do the sort. Uh, in other areas, I think a lot of that is bringing people into the discussion so that they appreciate the sort of uh, constraints and the sort of opportunities that we have to... Uh, uh, to craft new policies. So, for instance, the recently, uh, or in the last two years, the Ministry of Finance have this project where they get students to write about the, the budget, to write about what they would like to do. Uh, and those are good projects that enable students to recognise that in whatever we do, uh, there will be trade-offs and we have to make uh, judicious decisions. Not, not necessarily, because I think... You know the strength. Uh, one of the strengths has been that uh, you know the sp has been the speed of response in, in policy making. So we need to uh, make a make a, uh, a judicious decision as to which are the ones that are appropriate and which are not. So, for instance, during the financial crisis, I mean, we had to take many measures. Uh, some with consultation with industry, some without, because you have to act quickly. Yes. Well, I very much enjoyed my public service career. In fact, uh, otherwise I would not have spent uh, 20 years in it. And in the course of this, uh, you know, 27 years, uh, I have found it. You know, every day has been a very meaningful day for me to be able to see that what I do every day and what my colleagues and I do every day uh, translates into benefits for Singaporeans. Uh, this is a sharp contrast to you know, some of my colleagues elsewhere in other countries where they felt very frustrated that you know, what they do uh, have not translated in the same way. But as I've been, been more involved in policy uh, making over the years, uh, my conviction grows that you know, our ability to continue to uh, do this depends critically on the support that Singaporeans give to the government. Uh, and it depends critically on our ability to build a more cohesive uh, community. So I hope that I'm able to bring that perspective. And at the same time, I very much look forward to working with our constituents uh, so that I can more directly work with them on the individual cases and individual uh, problems that they may have. Yeah. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it is what is lacking. 
I think you know, keeping a society cohesive uh, is an ongoing challenge because the, the forces of uh, the divisive forces are always there. And I think with globalization, the, those forces can grow. I mean, we talk about you know, potential income uh, divide. And uh, also, as Singaporeans are more educated, uh, there are many more channels of information, many more channels of interactions. Uh, you can engage in very specific activities, in very specific interest groups without uh, participating in a common space. And so building that cohesiveness is, is an ongoing uh, exercise. It's always a work in progress. And it's something that I feel deeply that it is a very precious asset for Singapore, and we must maintain that. Well, I, 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 would, have, uh, I would have no problem doing that because uh, a policy is never right forever. And I think... Uh, you know, circumstances changed, our capabilities changed over time, and we must be nimble, we must continually innovate and, and adapt. And if I look, for instance, at uh, the financial services uh, sector, we had embarked on the liberalisation and other reforms almost 10 years ago, and it's still a work in progress. We continue to make many changes, and the global financial crisis taught us many valuable lessons about the nature of financial systems, and I will see that that work will continue uh, for many years to come.